It can seem that black cockatoo sightings are reasonably common in suburbs around Perth, so it's easy to forget that these birds are in dire trouble. The good news is there's still plenty we can do to help save these charming birds. G'day, I'm Karen Marie. Welcome to Life in the Bush. In this video, you'll learn about Bowdens, Carnabies and forest red-tailed black cockatoos, what you can do to help them and what happened last year when I participated in the Great Cocky Count. There are three black cockatoo species endemic to the southwest of Western Australia, which is where I'm filming on Noongar country. Two of the black cockatoo species have white panels on their tail feathers. They are the Bodans black cockatoo and the Carnaby's black cockatoo. And the third species has red panels on its tail feathers and is known as the forest red tail black cockatoo. Bodans and Carnaby's are listed as endangered, Bodans being the most endangered out of the two, and the forest red tails are listed as vulnerable. So all three species live for about 25 to 50 years in the wild. They can grow anywhere between 50 and 60 centimetres in height and they all weigh less than 800 grams. While the three species have slightly different requirements for food and habitat, all three of them love native species like eucalypts, hakeas, alicajarinas, banksias and grevilleas. Particularly the eucalypts are important for roosting and nesting and feeding. They've also been known to feed on nuts like almonds and macadamias and pecans and pine cones. In regards to identifying the black cockatoos, bodans and carnabies are very similar and difficult to tell the difference. The mature male in both the bodans and carnaby has a pink eye ring and a black bill. Juvenile males resemble the females who have a greyish white bill and a grey eye ring. In this footage the female is on the ground feeding from the Banksy cone and the male is nearby in the tree. These two birds are carnabies. If they were bodans, the upper beak would be noticeably longer. In regards to the forest red tails, the male has a very clear red band on his tail feathers, whereas the female has smaller bands that are almost more of an orangey yellow. The females and juveniles are also distinguishable from the mature males because they have these yellow spots on their head and wing and bars of orange yellow on their breast and belly feathers. Like the white tail cockatoos, the male also has a black beak and the females a pale greyish white beak. There's a lot of great information on the BirdLife Australia website and the Black Cockatoo Recovery website. I will put the links to those websites below if you're interested in knowing more. And on those websites, you can also listen to the audio of the calls of all three species. Now, if you're interested in being a little bit of a sleuth and you'd like to know if the black cockatoos are living nearby, but you haven't seen any or heard any, if you live near Mary trees, like this one, all you need to do is look down for evidence. The birds feed up there, but they drop their evidence onto the ground. So this is what a regular Mary nut looks like. Inside there are seeds that the birds love to feed from. They need to get in there somehow. They need to sometimes destroy part of the nut to get in there. There's a couple here. Can you see that a bird has been gnawing at, at this to get in to the seeds inside? These marks here are likely to be where it's been holding the nut with its claws and then it's been pulling it apart with its beak. There is a wonderful resource. Here's a screenshot of it. It will show you how to identify what type of cockatoo or parrot 
has been feeding from a Mary nut and I will put the link in the description below. So I mentioned earlier that I participated in the Great Cocky Count last year. The Great Cocky Count is a citizen science project run by BirdLife Australia to count numbers of black cockatoos in the wild. Participating was very exciting for me. Here's some footage from that evening. Uh, I can see, I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven flying around. Okay, I'm not going to record birds in flight. I'm only going to record ones that land and stay in the trees. So a typical day in the life of a white-tailed black cockatoo in southwest Western Australia, a Bowdens or a Carnaby. Basically, wake up in the morning in their roost tree, have a stretch, have a squawk, and then go for a drink of water before spending most of the day foraging. They'll have a nap in the afternoon and continue foraging. And when it gets to around this time of night, which is about an hour before sunset, they'll have a drink of water before settling in their roost tree for the night. It's late March at the moment and their breeding season is over. The whitetails breed for life with the same partner. The birds head further inland to breed between July and January. And from February to June, you see them a lot closer to the coast and they've come closer to the coast to forage for food. The whitetails will lay one egg, sometimes two, but in 95% of cases, only one young bird will survive. That bird then stays with the parents for about a year. So if I'm lucky enough to see three birds or groups of threes, that may mean that they've had a successful breeding year and that two parents have returned with one fledgling. The Great Cockatoo Count started in 2010 to record the numbers of Carnaby cockatoos found in the wild. Over the years they've also included the other two types of black cockatoos. The Bowdens and the Carnabies are very similar looking so as far as the Great Cocky Count goes I will just be recording whether or not I see red tails or white tails. So I'm on site and it's about 45 minutes prior to sunset. The cockatoos are expected to show up in their roost trees at around sunset. The funny thing about this site is the trees are on private property so I'm just parked up on the verge nearby so that I can see the birds land when they come in. The site where I'm surveying tonight has been surveyed four times in the past. There just hasn't been somebody available to survey it every year. And the one sighting has been back in 2016 where three birds were sighted. So on other occasions, zero birds were sighted roosting at this site. So let's hope that I see some tonight, but there's no guarantees. So that was 2021. The Great Cocky Count is held every year around March, April on a date determined by BirdLife Australia. If you are interested in participating, I will put a link down below. Unfortunately for me, I didn't record any birds roosting. They didn't stay in the trees. The birds that I saw early in the evening were flying over a lake and there was about 11 of those. Later on in the evening, I saw eight in pine trees nearby and then they all flew off just before dusk. I did make a note of the sightings that I did see. However, my official roosting number was zero. <laughs> this is the form if you're interested in what I filled in last year. We also were given the option of recording it directly into an app that you can put onto your phone called Bird Data. And the great thing about Bird Data is you don't have to wait for the great cocky count to record sightings of black cockatoos. If you see them at any stage throughout the year, you can record it on your app. Now, if you live in the southwest of Western Australia and want to do something to help these birds, 
there are so many different activities you can choose from. You can help out with the great cocky count. You can plant habitat and food species for them. You can volunteer to have a nesting tube installed on your property. You could install a bird bath and make sure it's a good sturdy one that's going to hold a larger sized bird and not tip over with their weight. You can donate your time or money to recovery efforts. There are organisations who help rehabilitate black cockatoos. You can even sponsor a black cockatoo. If you're an orchard grower and you're having problems with black cockatoos attacking your crops, there are humane ways to deter the cockatoos. So for any of these options, check out the description below. I have put all the links up that I can find for you. And at the end of this video, I'll also post a link to a Gardening Australia video about the types of plants you can put in your garden for the cockatoos. Now I just want to do a quick shout out to the group Save the Black Cockatoos. I'll put the Instagram link below because the day that I am filming this they are handing over a petition to Parliament for action. One of the major concerns at the time of filming this is that a lot of the numbers recorded in the Great Cocky Count of Carnaby cockatoos come from the Nangara pine plantation and we are at that vital stage where the pine plantation is planned for harvesting in the next couple of years so it's really important that the pine plantation stays there until our Banksia woodlands and our forests across the southwest of Western Australia are rehabilitated to the point where they can sustain the populations. I for one would love to see the numbers of these birds increase so that they can be removed from the status of vulnerable and endangered. I don't want to imagine a world where these beautiful birds are no longer gracing our skies. That brings me to a close on black cockatoos of the southwest of Western Australia. To support my channel, please click the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I hope to see you soon for more content showcasing life in the bush.